Saturday night at the Echo Arena in Liverpool. That's my Scouse accent. The one and only Patty Pimblett is joining us. Patty, how are you, my friend? I'm good. How are we? You all right, Terry? I'm doing great. Congratulations to you, Patty. Yes, it has been a while. How are you? Everything's good? Yeah, everything's fine. I'm, I'm great at the minute. I, I appreciate you doing this. I know you're very busy. You're still sort of in, in the afterglow of Saturday night. So I appreciate it very much, and congratulations to you on the big victory. Uh, we saw pure joy on your face afterwards. What a moment. You celebrating with your friends, jumping over the cage, the guardrail, you know, falls down. Considering everything that you've been through over, you know, the past year since the loss, how satisfying was that victory? Is it possible that it was more satisfying than becoming the featherweight champion? Yeah, yeah, you could say that, you know what I mean? After a 10, 10-month 10 layoff, and I just didn't want to be sitting out for that long as soon as you lose, you know what I mean? You want to get straight back in there, but I'd had that many fights in a short space of time that I needed a little break, so it ended up working out better for me, I think, in the end. And, yeah, the, the victory was a bit sweeter, I'd say. It was, uh, it was unbelievable, jumping over and jumping over to all my mates, and I was just seeing them there, and then was over there. Everyone went wild. It was great. No doubt that there was some kind of pressure on you after what happened in your last fight. Did you feel it? Were you more nervous going into this fight to quiet, you know, all the detractors, all the haters? Uh, no, that's, that's what I went in there to do, to silence all the doubters. You know what I mean? People have been doubting me for the past few months just because I got beat by someone. Not that's it, I'm finished. Well, I'm not finished, you know what I mean? I'm back, and I'm back better than ever. Patty, I mentioned this before we connected with you, but I can't recall a, a, a story in an instance where a fighter has such a strong following, is so popular, stumbles, and and everyone just wants to kick you, and everyone wants just wants to write you off and say that you were never was and all this stuff. I mean, it just blew me away. Even after the victory, there's a little bit of that. But why why are all these people? And some of them, I look at their profiles. They're from England, and they just want they, they want to take something away from you. What what is it about you that that leads to people acting this way? I don't know, you know what I mean? I'm like my mate, aren't I? You either love me or you hate me, you know what I mean? People watch me because they want me to win and people watch me because they hate me and they want me to lose and want to see me get knocked out. So it's one of them. They can, they can write me off all they want. I want them to. It just pushes me on more to be successful. Was there ever a point where it got to be too much? Where you had to take a break from everything? Yeah, no, I'm usually... Uh, nah, that's, I'm always on my phone, you know what I mean? I get moaned at it by my bed and by all my coaches and that, put that down. All my coaches and like that and my teammates in the gym and they're talking to me like, Paddy, Paddy, Paddy. And then they'll go, <laughs> Patrick. And I'll look up at them because my dad calls me Patrick. Um, you did, though, go after a certain troll, right? And you, you exposed the troll. Is that is that correct? Yeah, we found him, you know what I mean? He was giving not just me stick, he was giving all sorts of people stick online, but he was pit, like going after me for about 18 months, so ended up finding where he was and put him up online, and he's deleted all his accounts, hasn't he? How did you... So what did you do? You found, you like, you like hired a, a private investigator to go after this guy? Yeah, and we found him. It was Sam. <laughs> Why did you feel the need to do that? Like, not just block him and forget about him? Because people nowadays, people lose sleep over stuff like that, you know what I mean? They, like, it's cyberbullying. People, kids nowadays, it, it affects them, you know what I mean? So I, I, I'm just not the type of person to just block someone. I wanted to expose them. And I have, you know what I mean? He wasn't just saying stuff to me. He was saying stuff to all sorts of different MMA fighters, all sorts of mad different abuse. So he deserved it. And he was just a young 19-year-old lad, and he supported Liverpool Football Club as well, which made it even worse for me. Wow. Dumb me and, and did he reach out to you afterwards? Did he apologize? Did he, like, you know, come crawling back and saying no, sorry? He started, no, we started the nine say it's not him, but we know it's him, know what I mean? If we had two different people find him, and it was the same same account, so wow. you know, we know it was him. Uh, I've actually done something similar where I found a troll who was bothering me and I called him and, and he like almost like turtled up um, like, a, like a little baby turtle apologizing and saying how sorry he was. You, you, didn't ha you didn't have that experience. He didn't call you and apologize. No, no, we just tried, no, we tried to deny it was him. Tried to say like it's got nothing to do with me and that tried to say that he didn't know what was but in his bio on his own Instagram account it said um, 
lover of UK MMA and without being big headed, if you if you watch UK MMA, you know who I am. Sure, sure, of course. Um, all right, well, congratulations on that. Well done to you. Um, why did you fight this fight at 155? Are are you done at 145? Uh, I don't I don't know to be honest. Um, I didn't have to do any fats or sore to make weight the other day. I just dieted down to that weight, so it was just. Um, I'd say I was being more professional this time. I grew up a bit, you know what I mean? It took losing to realise the opportunity I've got here and I'm not going to throw it all away like other people have just by being daft and wanting to be a, a kid, you know what I mean? I'm an adult now and I need to put the work in like an adult, you know what I mean? Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. And I went yes. working hard enough, relying okay. on your talent. Is it fair to say, though, that for now you're going to stick at 155? You're going to stick with that since the, the weight cut went well and you appear to be in phenomenal shape? Yeah, I'm going to stick with 155 for now and then get that world title and then get the, get the 145 one back, get my belt back. Okay, you want to be a double champion at the same time? Yeah, one on okay. this shoulder, one on this shoulder. <laughs> you sound that. Hey, I noticed, uh, did you trim your hair a little bit? It wasn't as long as it was in the last fight. Hey, I, I try and get it trimmed so that it's not in my eyes, you know what I mean, Ariel? Okay. Going up to the fight, I'm always sparring like that, brushing it out the way in my face. It's it's not what you need, I swear. So got it trimmed a little bit, a little um, fringe, a little bit shorter than that, so it went in my face. Is there a certain name for that kind of haircut in, in, in Liverpool? No, that's... I haven't got a clue. I just go in and say trim that a bit for us there. Not. <laughs> I go to a hairdresser, me a barber, it'll absolutely ruin my hair. Do. They just they only know one hairstyle, a three and a two, and they'll just absolutely one shot me head off. Wait, so you do it yourself? No, I go to the hairdressers. Okay, okay. Woman, a woman, woman hairdresser. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. You got to go with the women. The women are more sort of they're they they're delicate, yeah. right? Yeah. You, call them the, you could call it the they, baddie. They said you've got to be delicate. That's right. That's right. Yeah, we can if you want. <laughs> I, I think if that's what you want to call it, we'll go with that. Um, the, the, the flying triangle, an amazing move, an amazing finish. It was beautiful. Is that something that you work on a lot? And did you see an opening for it? Tell us how you actually hit it. Yeah, they just come in and push me against the cage. And I just like thought about it for a second. I was like, oh, wait, there. I've got an over up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I bumped, threw me leg over. And that's just something that I've always done. You know what I mean? I've, I went for them in amateur fights and never finished them. And then that's me, me third flying triangle that I've thrown out. So I'm doing all right for them. Do, do you feel like he submitted more from the pressure from the triangle or the arm bar? Uh, well, I think the triangle was on tight. I think he was already about two taps to the triangle before I ended up going for the arm. But I just okay. thought the arm was the easier option to get the finish as well. So... I think he would have had to add, to be fair. The triangle was quite tight when I got the angle on it. Okay. Was that your first time back at the Echo Arena since your, your fight last April? Yeah, first time back. What was it like being back? Great, you know what I mean? It's, I was there last time when uh, Fishy defended his belt and Molly won. I was there that time, but obviously I couldn't fight. It was uh, yeah. it was horrible being there and not being able to fight, but it was nice to call on my teammates and then um, just had me wanting to fight even more, you know what I mean? I had me itching to get back in there, so I was glad when this show was actually in February and not a bit later in the year. This, you know, it was very cool to see your teammates like Molly. You know, she's fighting later on in the night. Um, she's there supporting you during your fight. You win, you're there supporting her. It felt like one of those sort of like memorable nights where everything kind of goes well for the team. Did you even notice that she was there? And what does it mean? To, you know, like she's about to fight for the belt and she's, you know, concerned with you cage side and watching you and cheering you on. Yeah, of course. It's, I've said it before, you know what I mean? Our gym's more like a family. We're all there for each other all the time. Like Elliot was the fight before me. I was out watching him like if if. if if I was before Molly, you know what I mean? I'd be watching her no matter what. We're all, we can't help it. We're always out there watching our teammates. We're not we're selfish, you know what I mean? We're like brothers and sisters and Paul's like our dad. Our coach is like our dad. He keeps us all in line, you know what I mean? I kind of feel now, I know you have these aspirations for the featherweight title and the lightweight title. 
But I sort of feel like the time is now for the UFC, with all due respect to Cage Warriors. Is there any chance that this was your last fight for Cage Warriors? Um, more than likely not. Like the UFC haven't come in with a fresh offer or not, and so we'll see. We'll see what happens. If they do, we'll consider it, obviously. But for now, it looks like I'll be fighting on Cage Warriors again because I want to get another fight in quite soon. To be fair, but we'll see what happens. Okay, because I did notice that in like some of your Instagram posts, you you did hashtag UFC bound. So you do want to end up in the UFC at some point, right? Yeah, and of course, to, like, to build a legacy in this sport, a lot of people say you've got to go to the UFC to do it, you know what I mean? Like, Ben Askren, how good he is, he doesn't get talked about as much as he should, really, should he, you know what I mean? Just because he's never been to the UFC. Right. Have they even ever offered you something and it just wasn't good enough? Yeah, they come in with an offer after I won the Cage Warriors title, but then Cage Warriors come with a, a better offer, so we stuck with them. Okay. Do you suspect that they're going to come with one after this fight? I don't know, you know. Uh, we'll see, won't we? You know what I mean? I'll, I'll obviously go over con any contact that gets sent over with me coaching um, and my manager. And if it's a good offer, then, yeah, you'd see me in the UFC with them Reebok shorts. But for now, we'll, I'm, I'm just planning on fighting on cage where he's again soon enough. What a travesty that would be. See, I mean, like, you see, this is the perfect example. Like, someone like you should not be in the Reebok shorts. Like, you're just too unique. I don't want you to look like everyone else. You get what I'm saying? It drives me. It drives me mad, Patty. I know. I'll, I'll be honest. I'd rather not have them Reebok shorts. <laughs> I'd rather be wearing me scramble ones with the last yes. head on. But it's no good, is it? Does it mean something to you? Like, do you, do, you, do you really feel like before you cross over at some point, do you want to get the Cage Warriors titles back, you know, just to sort of exercise those demons? Is that a really important task for you? Um, I'll be honest, I want to, like, but it's not to be all and end all, is it? Like, I've okay. got being a world champion. I was a world champion at the age of 21. So, but if I get it again, I'm a two-time world champion by the age of 23, aren't I? So... Not bad. That would be not bad. But hopefully I've got another belt as well, so I'll be three-time world champion by the age of 23. <laughs> so then, then with Sands, and I've got one belt on each shoulder. That's when we're definitely going to UFC. D does it feel like a weight has been lifted, though, now that you're back in the win column? Do you feel different on this Monday? Um, I feel a nice little bit chubbier where I've had some nice food. Okay. Just being for an Italian then for me, dad's birthday, it went down the street. But um, I do feel like, I don't, I don't know, it's, it's, it beats waking up on a Monday morning after you've lost, put it that way. Sure, sure. <laughs> I can understand that. By the way, and your t-shirt. I forgot what that felt like until April. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the t-shirt that you were wearing, uh, Alfie, a life, what was that all about? It's, there's a young lad by ours, he's, um, he's on like a life support machine and to be and doing all like court cases and stuff, saying should he turn his machine off and let him like die, you know what I mean? But I've been to see him and they're saying he's not responsive, but he is. He squeezed my hand, he was blinking, he was looking around, you know what I mean? And like the sound of turning his machine off on him, just let him die, which I think is absolutely disgusting. This is a friend of yours? Uh, no, his, his dad's a friend of mine. He's okay. only a young kid, he's only about two. Oh, wow. Wow. And his name's Alfie? Yeah. That's why I'm in a hashtag, a hashtag Alfie's on me. Wow. And where do things stand right now? Um, now his machine's still on. They were saying they were going to turn it off on Friday, but his machine's still on. So hopefully it stays that way. Okay. Um, well, I wish him the best. That very, very kind of you to, to bring some awareness to that. Uh, and by the way, uh, also curious, your teammate Molly, I, I noticed that she was coming out with the uh, the Everton flag, and you're a Liverpool FC guy. What's up with that? How are you guys even friends? I thought that that was like the thing that, you know, you guys can't coexist. No, nah, it's the same city, and it? it's a friendly derby. It's, uh, I hate United. I hate Man United more than I hate Everton. You know what I mean? Oh, really? As long as I've been alive, Everton haven't, haven't won at our own ground. I'm feeling they haven't won a trophy. Since I've been alive, so I, I don't even hate Everton that much. The, the shite, to be fair. But um, 
<laughs> I, I, I hate Man United more. I don't even mind Everton. Just the blue shite in it. That uh, our little little cousins are terrible compared to us. They don't finish above us, Ariel. It's quite <laughs> okay. sly. They haven't so got a trophy to their name. <laughs> so you can't even like muster up the, the animosity towards them, right? It's cute. No, not really. I, I can't. All right, fair enough. I, I just I was surprised to see her come out with that with the blue and everything. I thought that you guys were like, you know, mortal enemies, but I guess not. Do me a favor though. We talked about the Reebok thing. If in fact, you know, the UFC does come calling, please do not get rid of your walkout song. It it might be my favorite in MMA these no. days. It's not going nowhere, the walkout song. If you hear me, mate, ask me to change a little bit of it and that, but no. Staying the same. It's uh it's great. It's a great tune. I won't be uh, changing that. It's beautiful the way everyone's clapped. Did you? Was it the same reception on Saturday? The 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 one you know in the last fight it was I mean deafening even off the uh, you know television hearing it. But did it feel the same this time, or did you feel like the fans were kind of a little more you know trepidatious toward you? Uh, no, it just felt the same. You know what I mean? It felt like everyone was going nuts. Okay, and I think they were. Yeah. To be honest, I thought uh, the the crowd had affect Alexis more, but. Give him his due, his experience, play the part, and he was game. Well, it was a great moment, a great finish, uh, a great victory. So, what, 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 you know, if there is no UFC, April 28th is when you want to fight again, correct? Yeah, hopefully. Get, get, uh, get on then. Just the only thing from that fight is a little stiff wrist. The bottom okay. of my feet are there, and where I've jumped out the cage onto the concrete. I feel like I've had heels on all night. Oh, wow. <laughs> So you, 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 you got banged up in the celebration? No, I just like the bottom of my feet are hurting, so it's hurting when I walk around with no shoes on. The bottom of my feet are sore, where I've landed on the concrete dead hard with all my weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's laughing. Yeah, well, all right. At least it wasn't anything too serious in the fight. Um, I'm very happy for you, Patty. Uh, again, I, I thought it was you know very disappointing to see how some people were kicking you, but... You stuck it to them. You have a lot of supporters, more supporters than the detractors, and I think you shut up all the detractors on Saturday night. So kudos to you. Congratulations. And uh, I'm looking forward to your next one. I, I didn't forget, I didn't jump off the bandwagon like many others, my friend. Still here, still <laughs> driving that thing. Best that not. Hey, your best that not. No, no, I would oh, never do that. Weird when I do see you. <laughs> I'd love to get the baddie haircut, by the way. I don't know if I could rock it, but it would be something. Maybe uh, maybe for Halloween. But uh, it's great to see you back in the winter circle. I'll you a baddie wig. I'll get you a little baddie wig. Do they make those? Nah, we'll, we'll get them sorted, though. Don't worry. Gosh, what a great thing that would be. You get the whole crowd wearing that thing? That's brilliant. You make some more money. Do it. Market that. That's what I'm saying. I'm a marketer's market wet dream. <laughs> Uh, well done, Patty. Congratulations and happy birthday to your father. Thank you for doing this after a night out. I appreciate it. Thanks very much. Nice one, Ariel.